Okay, uh, so what I'm trying to deliver here is uh, two different um, two different PowerPoints, uh, 15 minutes each and 10 minutes, so uh, I will have to be very quick, so bear with me. Um, so what I'm going to talk about is, is two things, I suppose. Uh, the SERV project, which was a, a, an EU FP6 funded on the Concerto Initiative, the other one in Ireland was the Dundalk 2020 uh, Concerto Initiative. Um, led by SAI. Um, this one is led by LIT, or the Tipperary Institute, which is now LIT Tipperary, and we are the technical coordinators of the retrofit work packages. <coughs> so what we did in that project, I'll go through, and the lessons we've learned from that in terms of um, our near zero energy building pilot this year. Um, I'll talk about a few other things as we go through. So this project, I suppose, focused on a small area of North Tipperary that started in Nina, surrounded the Flat Jordan Eco Village, and the new build part of the project was um, the establishment of the district heating, um, the biomass and solar district heating in, in Clough Jordan, and the retrofit part was, was what we were in charge of. So there's some pictures there of the Eco Village. Uh, we did a lot of retrofit and we did a lot of monitoring. Um, <clears throat> We installed a lot of sensors in a lot of houses and did a, a, an in-depth um, bottom-up analysis of all the energy before and after of each of those buildings. Um, there's a lot of research, there's a lot of research reports, they're all on our website, tba.ie, if anyone wants to look at them, and you can see all the cost effectiveness. We monitored every euro spent in every single house and how they were funded, and looked at the discounted rate and all that sort of stuff, which I'm not going to talk about today because I have five minutes. So we essentially did 400 retrofits. We did a pilot um, home energy savings scheme at the time. Um, we didn't like the term HES because we didn't have a, a very good historical reference, so it became the Better Energy Homes Project. Um, we piloted the BER methodology for existing buildings. Um, we installed a lot of renewables, uh, 600 wood stoves. Um, we now have about 20 people supplying timber in North Tipperary. Um, that didn't uh, didn't exist. It was all coal <coughs> and turf before that, so it kind of a quite a cheap way to supply a significant amount of renewable heat, um, and all very high high quality wood stoves that meet a lot of the emission standards. We installed a lot of biomass boilers in Gertine Agricultural College, and um, it's just under a thousand square meters of solar panels as well, um, split between the eco village and on existing buildings. We collected about 40 million pieces of energy data. Um, we visited each house, probably temporary energy agency we visited each of the monitored houses probably about eight times. Um, <coughs> contractors would have all visited them another 10 times and, and so on and so on. Um, and w one person got very, very good at drinking tea. Um, the whole project had 4.1 million grant aid. Uh, the retrofit part of that was 2.1 million. We also used some SEAI pilot home energy savings scheme money to double up on that. Um, the measures back in 2007 at 70 cent a retail litre of kerosene, I think it was 70 cent that we did the analysis on. Again, like if you can recall then, we hit $147 a barrel in this period and we also hit $32 a barrel at the very end of the period and we thought, well, we have to peg it somewhere. So we went for 70 and there was a reason for it, but I forget it at this stage. Um, we increased the use of biomass in the entire region, not just in the retrofitted houses, by 13%. <coughs> pre and post, so this is the pre, so that the buildings that were involved in serve are the green lines there, and that was the, the building stock. Again, you're marketing to people who own their own homes and think that they need to retrofit their houses, so you're always going to get the lower performing houses understanding that they need to retrofit their houses. Now. I suppose for a lot of the people in this room, you might realize that houses built pre-crash all need to be retrofitted, whereas all of our retrofit discussions and documents and so on say that houses built pre-2006, but anything built really pre-2010 probably need to be retrofitted. And it wasn't the last one in 2009 Really, anything built before the Department of Environment's 2008 Part L, uh, where that 40% MP uh, saving came in, needs to be retrofitted. So this was the before and after BER results. So the BER showed a 47% decrease in primary energy requirement. Um, and the actual monitored showed a 37% decrease in primary energy 
around the energy requirements. And the difference, that 10% difference, or in essentially 25% difference of <coughs> savings, um, we got from two things. One was obviously the rebound effect and higher interior temperatures, and we did monitor the temperatures. Um, but the second thing we, we, we understood to happen was people who use their primary heating system a lot, when you put in a high efficiency, attractive wood burning stove and replace for an open fire, people bought wood and sat in a warmer one room. And when you look at the primary energy requirement of wood burning stove versus a primary energy system, you're, you're decreasing efficiency by 10 or 15%. And that made up some of the rebound effect on a primary energy requirement. If you looked at CO2, obviously it wouldn't have had anywhere near the impact because they were burning wood. Does that make sense? You're scratching your head. Um, so this was what we thought the market would be interested in. So what we had to do is we offered the market. So we offered homeowners an upgrade package. So we said, if you do this, we'll give you this much money. If you do this, we'll give you this much money. And there was a, I think I presented at 26 public meetings. Um, we went to hundreds of homes. I think we had about 600 applications and about 350 people were successful. Um, we had a minimum requirement of 40%. We couldn't tell people we had a minimum requirement of 40%. We had to say, these are the minimum measures you must do. And the minimum measures back in those days that we said, um, and we thought a lot about air tightness and ventilation in back in those days, but because the market didn't understand that and homeowners wouldn't have appreciated that, it was what is now the better energy homes, so it's cavity wall, external, um, attic insulation, boilers, controls, cylinders, solar thermal, um, and so on. And that was the package that we gave to people on a wood stove. And they had a minimum set of measures, and then they had a, a choice. So the minimum was um, attic insulation, wall insulation, and heating controls. And because people were doing heating controls, about 70% of people did their boiler, about 75% of people did their hot water cylinder. Um, so that was what we thought was the right package back in 2007. And we wrote the, um, when I say we, Seamus Hoyne in, in, in LIT, wrote the application in 2004 and revised it in 2005 and we got on the ground in 2007 and we did the works in 2008 and it took a long time. That was what we thought was the right thing or a retrofit package. So we got 40%. At that time, and I think still we use the term 40% has been a deep retrofit. I would consider that a reasonably shallow retrofit, um, as I think most of the people in the room from the discussion this morning would consider. So we thought about that, and we thought about, well, how do we go further, and what are we going to do in 2015? Because between the end of serve and 2015, we've retrofitted about 1,500 homes, a lot of local authority homes. We have a private home, Better Energy Community Funded Project that did 200 houses last year and another hopefully 200 this year. <coughs> but we're only doing attics and walls at the moment. And the reason is because we've made a decision to not install fossil fuel boilers um, and to not, under any of our schemes, install any fossil fuels. Um, and the reason behind that is fairly obvious. We need to be off fossil fuels in 24 years, I guess, 25 years by 2040 across the whole of society. So that's a very I think quite a silly thing to do to be installing fossil fuels or to be building new gas lines or anything like that. So that was, I suppose, the, the end of serve now and then. And now for, for that particular slide was 2012. Um, so, you know, in, in terms of that, what serve did was serve, I suppose, gave guidance to what is the now the National Retrofit Program in terms of better energy homes. We in, we did an awful lot of training, and that followed on um, a couple of different training projects, and now QualiBuild is part of that, and, and the Green Building Council have taken on a lot of the original learnings from CERV through, through their partnership with LIT and the Build Up Skills and so on. Um, there's a number of masters being done, and I think one PhD on the data points, and again, it's open if anyone wants it. Um, and we have a lot of biomass ESCOs in place in North Tipperary um, for a number of years, supplying a lot of, a lot of the large buildings. So back to 2015, we've kind of felt, um, and, and maybe this is just me personally, but me and, and the board of, of the TEA feel it, fossil fuels are no longer something we can be installing um, if we want to, uh, I suppose, limit climate change to 2 degrees or, or 1.5 degrees. Um, 
So what we're thinking today is we need to have a strategy for 2040, and we need to be demonstrating that now. So we have a pilot project, which I have a few flyers if anyone's interested in, um, and I'll leave them on the desk here, and you can take them on the way out. So what we're focusing on is elimination of the fossil fuel at the household level. We are going to be using quite a lot of heat pumps, and the, I suppose the idea is that the grid electricity, I think, is going to be around 450 grams of CO2 per kilowatt if we get three COP, um, we'll get about 150 grams of CO2 net heat, heat, uh, um, net heat per kilowatt hour. And as you know, money point comes to the end of life and, and so on, and as we increase the grid renewable electricity by 2040, ideally, we'll be nearer enough 100 grams or less, or maybe even 50 grams, and then heat pumps will be renewable. And, and this is why we feel that, that heat pumps are the right future. I suppose in, in, um, in larger facilities, biomass is the right facility, right, and for smaller, I think we're going to be going for heat pumps. So for housing, we need to look at fossil fuels at the household level, primary and secondary. We need to be looking at energy efficiency, um, and we need to be looking at um, what, I suppose, the, what the real implications are. And I suppose I, I look at, you know, Simon McGuinness, who was referenced earlier on in the, the, the deep retrofit, the 110,000 euros and so on, you know, at the generational retrofit where we take buildings and we completely ge generationally refit them, we absolutely should do what they're talking about there. And, and that might cost 60,000 or 80,000 and, and so on. And that's what is going to have to happen to get to 2050. But between now and 2040, we're not going to do that with every building. We can't afford it. Nobody's going to do it. We won't get people to invest that much money. Um, while it might happen to maybe 10 or 15% of the building stock between now and 2040, it won't happen to all of the building stock. So we need a credible option that will substantially decarbonize the residential sector without spending you know, 130 billion euro on our, um, on our dwellings. And I think the figure earlier on was 750 euros a square meter, which, you know, if we talk about 1,200 euros a square meter as a rebuild cost, it's, it's quite a lot of money. Um, so we need a cheaper solution. We have 25 years, and we need to start now. We need to start 10 years ago. But So what we're trying to do this year, and we have a pilot. We launched it on Friday. Um, we're looking for 20 homes. And what we're trying to do with those 20 homes is to take them from wherever they are currently to somewhere in the region of Sean's cost optimal curve from 50 to 100 kilowatt hours per square meter. Um, so it's not 43 kilowatt hours per square meter. It's not a passive house retro retrofit. If someone wants to do air tightness in their house, just as an example, um, to get to below two, <coughs> pull off the reveals and air tightness tape around the windows. There is no other way of doing it. You have to pull off the skirting board and seal between the bottom of the wall and the floor. <coughs> to do that in the house is going to cost you five or ten grand. It's not cost effective. People won't pay for it. So what we're saying is, can we fix the cheap holes to fix? Can we take where the pipe goes up into the attic and there's a three inch hole for a one inch pipe and tape around that? Can we do the downers? Can we do you know, mastic with a high-grade high mastic around the outside of the window and stop, you know, 10 air changes an hour or 15 air changes an hour and bring it down to, to below five. So that's what we're trying to do. We're not trying to get brilliant, but we're trying to get good. Um, so that's what we're trying to do from an air tightness point of view. We have to go away from natural ventilation to get air quality up in airtight buildings. Um, so we're going to pilot HRV retrofit and DCV. We're going to give people the option. Um, while, you know, I suppose it's certainly there are products starting to come on the market that, that do, I suppose, distributed HRV, I feel that the market isn't quite ready to our project. We don't want to take those projects just yet. Um, none of the contractors that we go to have any experience of it, and I can't then provide that as a market solution to homeowners. Um, we're going to put in heat pumps. We're going to change a selection of radiators, maybe all of the radiators in some house, maybe some in others. We're going to spend between 20 and 40,000 per house. We have 30% finance under the Better Energy Finance, a grant from the state. We have about 10% from the energy supplier obligations. Um, there will be some HRI as well. Um, not, a, not a huge amount, but a, a couple of percent. 
and we have a, a, an AIB loan for the remainder. Now, because it's 20 houses, I wasn't able to negotiate a, a very low-cost loan on it. <coughs> um, the architect who talked about the German um, KFW bank, <coughs> that's what we need to get to, but I need to demonstrate to AIB that there is an appetite out there for loans, and then we need to talk about how do we bring the cost of those loans down. So for this year, it's not a very cheap loan, but it is a loan nonetheless. So we're bringing all of those together into a package and we're marketing that to people to retrofit their houses. We have a minimum requirement. The minimum requirement is essentially heat pumps. We want to get rid of poor open fires. So nobody will have an open chimney by the end of this project. That's one of the minimum requirements. And that will mean some people will say, well, I'm not interested in that because I want to keep my open fire. And I said, fine, that's not, a, that's not a super home as we're calling it. Um, there will be some biomass boilers, um, the air tightness upgrade will be there. There will be an air tightness test as a, I suppose, a, a problem solving test. We'll do all the standard stuff in air tightness and then we'll do a pressurization test and look for further leaks. And hopefully we'll get all the houses down to an average of five or lower. Um, we'll obviously do ventilation, we'll have a, uh, electricity monitors, we'll have electricity monitors and heat meters on the, on the heat pumps and so on. Um, and Ideally, we'll have a passive house front door. The costs are coming in very, very high, and I think we may not get the market to pay for those. Um, but we realize that, you know, very leaky, very poor U value, you know, single leaf timber, timber doors in a hall creating huge amounts of drafts are, are a source of significant energy leakage. We'll obviously offer all the other options. Um, if people don't have a cavity, if people have a cavity that isn't pumped, we will require them to do it. <coughs> Okay, if they do have a cavity that's existing pumped, we're not going to ask them to spend you know, 15 or 20 grand to get a U-value from 0.35 down to 0.15 because it just isn't cost effective. Um, we'll offer people changing their windows, um, but again, we'll only require people to change them if they have very poor um, double glazed or single glazed. Um, we'll offer solar PV, and again, that'll be based on using the PV to heat water in the summer on site to make sure most of the heat PV generated electricity is used on site. Um, so we'll, lots of things to, to learn. I have some brochures and I am looking for pilot houses and I'm looking for early adopters and I'm looking for the likes of the people in this room who will use what they learn in retrofitting their own house to influence others. So I have some brochures and I am marketing this scheme. We have to have it done by the 30th of October and I think that's completely impractical, but I'm going to try very hard. Um, but we might get an extension if, if it works out very well. Um, so, you know, one of the things that I think we're going to learn is, is this a solution for Ireland for 2020 to 2040 to try and decrease substantially the carbon emissions at a household level and ideally for Ireland remove the worst fossil fuel, I suppose, that we use in terms of coal and oil at a household level and replace that with, at the very worst, when money point closes, um, combined cycle gas, which will still give a much lower carbon emissions per kilowatt hour um, than what we currently use.